Today's halo effect features some interesting new research for those investors hunting for yield. After decades of low interest rates, investors have understandably been turning to high yield securities to generate investment income. A couple versions of these, business development corporations or BDCs, and REITs, otherwise known as a real estate investment trust, can tease attractive yields, but often come with a number of hidden drawbacks. Our new research shines light on the big difference between the high yields and at times the low total returns so-called high yield investments can produce. And in short, we make the case for structured notes as a simple alternative. I'm joined today by Denny O'Malley, one of the paper's authors. Can you walk us through how notes may be able to produce a similar yield, but at times offer a better risk adjusted result? Yes, I can, Dave. Uh, so while these high yielding investments can look attractive on the surface, with yields often ranging from 7% to 15%, investors that look deeper should see some concerning elements. And the key piece of this puzzle is leverage. BDCs and REITs generate these high yields by leaning on debt and derivatives. While these can produce strong positive results, it can also make negative results more extreme. And that impacts the price of these investments, making it possible to have negative total returns despite the big dividend yield. Agency is a great example, posting a negative 10% total return over the last five years, despite having an average dividend yield of about 11% per year. And that's why we like structured notes linked to diversified assets like the S&P 500. Take this note as an example. For three years, this S&P 500 income note can generate a yield around 8%, and it also protects against the first 25% of losses for the S&P 500. That can provide attractive returns alongside some insurance against market risk. What can we expect the returns to look like? This bell curve shows the likelihood of return outcomes. The taller the column, the more likely the result. In blue, the structured note has an extremely high probability of positive returns, over 95% of the time. And then in black, agency has a much more extreme return profile, stretching from big negative returns on the left to big positive returns on the right. That can be problematic, as investors generally like consistency and don't want to open the door to large negative results. Finally, this scatter plot shows the breadth of outcomes that may occur for an income note and for agency. Obviously, the outcomes for agency are all over the place relative to the income note, which is expected to post consistent positive returns across the majority of market environments. Thanks, Denny. At the end of the day, it's all about creating a smoother, if not better, investment experience. Let's bring in Brian Stutland from Equity Armor Investments. Brian, I recently saw your partner, Luke Rabari, talking about this idea on Fox Business. You guys are on the front lines every day, helping clients navigate the market's uncertainty. Why is this idea resonating with your clients and how are you positioning to tap into this? Well, what we've learned over the last decade, maybe even more, is that the sort of diversification of using stocks and bonds and some sort of fixed income strategy to bring in income into the portfolio, there really is more inherent risk in that than one thinks. There's a lot of correlation to the general stock market when one is even bringing in income like you talked about, uh, BDCs and REITs and whatnot. And so we're trying to diversify out of that typical 60-40 modern portfolio theory and create this sort of liquid alternative bucket that can still produce income for somebody. And me as a former option trader on the trading floors, what we like to do is use optionality to sort of sell insurance and bring in income. And so I really like what Denny's talking about in terms of an index linked note like the S&P 500 one, where I'm getting 25% protection on the downside. So I've lowered the risk to having sort of any equity exposure in that sense. I'm bringing in income into the portfolio on the other side, and I'm basically creating this stocks and income producing sort of strategy without having to be so subjective to interest rate movement in the market and more subjective to just growth in general of the economy. And so this is sort of an area that resonates well with clients, not just for individuals, but investment advisors are starting to use this strategy too, to use structure notes sort of to replace that income portion of their portfolio. And so when you combine that of bringing in premium, maybe owning volatility somewhere else in the portfolio, should there be a dramatic downturn in the market and getting some equity exposure to the upside, between all of that, you've created a nice portfolio that gets you what you, know, you were talking about, those solid risk adjusted returns, just in a different format. I saw just yesterday, Liz Ann Saunders, Charles Schwab's chief investment strategist, she was talking about how the Fed put is dead. And of course, for some of us, we can remember when this was called the Bernanke put, 
At any rate, after nearly 35 years of Fed tinkering, it doesn't look like the Fed is going to ride in to be the market's de facto floor anymore. So I like your guys thinking about trying to hit yield bogeys investors have come to expect, but in a way that try to do so without simply taking on higher volatility. I thank you both for joining me today, and we'll see you again soon.